a symmetry in full force. Look at this top with a diagonal overlay over one shoulder and across the front. Before sewing it, I was intrigued. It's a really fun sew and I'm sharing all the details today. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today is about asymmetric sewing. Asymmetric sewing can be really fun. The way that you cut your pieces needs to be different than when you cut pieces that are just the same on both sides. It doesn't mean that it's harder. You just need a little bit more concentration but then the result is super spectacular and what I'm talking about today is the camo top from Itch to Stitch. This is a pattern for knit fabrics. It's super pretty. It's asymmetric as I said. It's got a V front and back neckline. The most striking feature here is that asymmetrical overlapping piece that is going to go on top of your right shoulder but not on top of the left so it'll go diagonally. So pretty. There are long sleeves easy to sew in with cuffs that are shaped. I love those types of cuffs and then towards the hem you finish it with a hem band that brings it closer to the body it's not a long top it'll hit the mid hip according to your height you need neat fabrics for the camo you can't really make this in a woven fabric at all the neckline nothing's really going to fit i always mention this because i know it's in the back of a lot of people's mind can i make this with a woven no you can't it has been designed for neat fabrics with stretch you don't need that much stretch 20 to 30 percent so it doesn't have to stretch a great deal it does need to have spandex in there so that it does have recovery if you don't, you're going to end up with a really deformed top, especially the overlay piece that in this pattern is called a scarf. If your fabric is the type that will just stretch out of shape, you know, this is going to look pretty deformed. On the screen, you can see the types of fabrics that could work. Not all sweater knits are the same. <laughs> just test them. Some rayon French terry might work, some athletic knits, stretch velvet. I would stay away from rayon spandex, for example. I think it's difficult to hem rayon spandex and have a really neat result if you're just sewing with a sewing machine. At least it's been my experience. <laughs> Maybe you have a cover stitch and you can get a better result, but I just generally think that the fabric is too lightweight and too flimsy for this style. Just my personal opinion. I would rather choose something that's a little bit more medium weight. I've chosen two fabrics and you can see the first one here is a sweater knit. I have stripes here. I have the same sort of stretch vertically and horizontally, just the right amount. It does recover. It does have 5% spandex in there. Because this fabric stretches both ways in equal amounts, I can place my pattern pieces with the stripes going in different ways, which is something I really like to do with stripes to avoid the horizontal stripes. And then the second version, I've chosen athletic knit that is lighter weight, between light to medium. It's not very light, it's not medium. It does have a nice drape. I thought it was a great fabric to make a second version that is slightly different to the original version. Because this is a new pattern, of course, it's 20% off for the first week. So if you like the style and want to try it for yourself, it's a good time to get it for a little bit less. I will leave you my affiliate link down below if you'd like to use it. At no extra cost to you, if you purchase from my link, I get a little commission back and that is one way that you can support the work that I do here on YouTube. So thank you very much if you do use my link. Size range is great from 00 to 40 US and it goes up to a 62 inch hip. It is a semi-fitted top, so at the bust you have about one and a half inches of positive ease, about three inches of ease at the waist. And then at the hips, it's an eighth of an inch, which is negligible. I mean, I would say that there is zero ease at the hips and that is because of that hem band. So it's supposed to come in at the hips and I think it's a really nice style. It's not gonna be super tight there. It's not boxy either. It's got really nice shaping. I chose a size 16 for mine and the only fitting adjustment I made was to make the sleeve a little bit longer. I didn't really need to lengthen the main pieces. I thought the original length was perfectly fine for me. For the sewing, I focused on showing you how to sew the neckline, the asymmetric piece that goes over your right shoulder, how to put all of this together because once you're finished with that, then sewing in your sleeve and your handband can be super easy. So let's hop in right into the sewing and see how this comes together. I'm sure you're gonna find it really, really interesting. I did, let's go. It's a shame to watch us fade away. But all the beautiful things we've This is an asymmetric top, so you need to cut all the pattern pieces with the fabric right sides up and the pattern right sides up. So we are looking at the back over here and the front. They aren't exactly the same, so they are different pattern pieces. So on the front here, you always know which is the front and which one is the back if you follow the notches. Along this curve there, you'll find two single notches. And on the small shoulder piece, the front one, you also find a single notch there. That's how you always know that's the front. They are similar, 
This one that belongs to the back has a double notch right there and on this slanted area there's also a double notch there and a single notch over here. So it's really easy to tell. Also on the armhole you have two notches there that signifies the back and on this one you have a single notch right there. These are the two pieces that will go diagonally and on one side of your shoulder. They are different. You also need to cut them with the fabric right sides up and the pattern piece right sides up. When you look at these pieces you'll see that this is a shorter piece and it's concave. It curves inwards and this longer piece is convex, it curves outwards. So it's really easy to tell what the difference is. This longer convex piece is the one that's going to go on your shoulder and this is going to be part of the neckline. That's why it's interfaced from the edge up to the first notch that you see there. And you do that for the front and the back piece over there. For these pieces you also will know which is the front and the back because there is a single notch over there and on this other one you'll see a double notch right there. This is a little piece of binding that you need to cut from a lighter weight knit. If your main fabric is pretty lightweight then you can use the same but I prefer to cut it from a different one. It needs to also be stretchy and it's quite little. These are the hemband pieces. There's two of them and they have seams on the sides. I will be just pressing those open and sewing these with a straight stitch. I won't be serging anything and this will just go on the bottom. I don't have the actual sleeves to show you in fabric. They are just traditional sleeves. I have a bit of colorful paper there because I added one and a half inches of length. And this is the type of cuff. It's the one that's shaped. The one that's going to be narrower here at your wrist and a little wider there. I think those always fit really well. These are the back pieces and you need to stabilize this back shoulder. I have a bit of interfacing right there. And I've placed it a little bit away from the edge just so that I make sure to catch this with a 3 8 seam allowance. And the back shoulder piece, you need to stabilize the neckline here and the shoulder. So these two areas right there. On the front shoulder piece, you only need to stabilize the neckline there. That is all you need to do with the front piece, different to the back piece that I've just shown you. These are the small shoulder pieces. This is the front one. Here we have a single notch on the armhole. This is the neckline right there. There's a single notch there. Back one is similar. You have two notches down there and two notches on the armhole. And I've just pinned them here on the shoulder seam. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew and serge. I'm gonna do this with the sewing machine. You can do it with a serger, but I just prefer the sewing machine. Seam allowance for this pattern is 3 8 of an inch, and I'm using a stretch needle number 80. So this is the back shoulder seam that has been stabilized. That's going to prevent the shoulder seam from stretching out over time. Okay, here are the two shoulder pieces sewn. I've searched it. I've got it towards the back. This is the back piece. This is the front. This is going to be an armhole and these are short little side seams. So I'm going to flip this over to have the right side of the fabric facing up. And now we need to finish this neckline area. It's just a partial neckline. And this is where our little binding piece comes in. We just have to fold these wrong sides together like this and pin it all along the edge. You don't have to stretch anything. And also this neckline has been stabilized so it's not going to stretch either. Right sides together, pin and sew at 3 8. Here's the binding piece. Pinned, but I've pinned it from this side so I'm gonna have the interface side touching the presser foot and the binding at the bottom touching the feed dog. This way I try to prevent that this binding stretches out a little as I'm sewing. just trimming the seam allowance a little and now as always we understitch. I'm just going to put the seam allowance under the binding and sew on the edge right there and then we're going to flip it to the inside and top stitch it. I'm using my blind hand presser foot with the needle to the left and that always helps get a really clean edge stitch. I've given it a quick hand baste and I'm just going to sew it. For me it's always easier to just do it from the wrong side because I know I'm catching the binding and it doesn't really make a difference. I'm just using a straight stitch here. Remember this is an area that's been stabilized. It doesn't need to stretch. The neckline's done on this side and now we have these tiny tiny side seams to sew. I have actually searched the edges separately and I'm going to be sewing and pressing these seams open. It'll be less bulky this way. And for all of these other seams I'm going to be using a shallow zigzag stitch that almost looks like a straight stitch. Here we have the two large pieces right sides together and you can see the black interfaced area of the shoulder from the back piece right there on the, on the top. We are going to sew these two shoulder seams together and also the side seams. They're very simple seams so I'll just do them off camera. Here I've got the main pieces sewn, shoulder seams right there and side seams right here. For these pieces I have also searched the edges separately. I just evaluate each fabric and I think it's going to be less bulky like that and I think it's just going to turn out neater. 
Okay, so now we have the scarf pieces, front and back pieces, right sides together. This is the concave side, which is shorter, that will be the part of the side seam. And the convex side, which is longer, the one that curves out, that will be actually on top of your shoulder, on top of your right shoulder. And this interfaced area will be part of the neckline. But all we have to do now is sew these two seams, this one and this one. I have also surged the edges previously and I'll be pressing these seams open. Once these two seams are sewn, we can go ahead and serge the edge, press it up to the wrong side and finish the hem and then we'll be back to assemble all the neckline together. Okay, now we return to work with this little piece. These were the two left shoulders sewn together. This is the front, this is the back. You will always see which one is the front because there's a single notch there and on this other one there's a double notch there. And now these notches are going to match the main front pieces. These are the main pieces. We had already sewn that shoulder seam and the side seams. And on this diagonal cut line there, you'll see a single notch. At the back, you'll see a double notch right there. What we need to do now is take this and align this one. And the thing that seems really counterintuitive is that you need to align them wrong sides together. Together. So wrong side white with white you can see the single notch right there that is going to align with that single notch there and up here you see another single notch that is going to align with the edge here of this piece and they match exactly and then you keep going around and you have this tiny tiny side seam that is going to align with this side seam this is why I opted to press my seams open I think having them flat like this is just easier and it makes for less bulk so align these side seams they are going to be on top of each other right there and then let's switch this to this other side bring this little fabric over to the back and you can see the double notches right there match them up super intriguing construction techniques I love putting garments together where it's just a little different than what you usually do and then on the back you also have a single notch further away from here and that is going to match the edge of the shoulder piece it matches perfectly okay so that's how the piece looks it looks very strange remember the these are wrong sides together right there and you pick up from the front matching all the notches matching the sides going all the way along to the back now what we are going to do with these two pieces is just base them on look you can machine baste I never machine baste because I don't see the point if I'm gonna baste I'm gonna do it by hand so I'm gonna catch these do it within the seam allowance the seam allowance is 3 8 so I'll probably baste it around a quarter of an inch and really catch it and hold it there all the way along this edge and then we'll have this piece fixed then we're going to go ahead and add the other scarf piece and then we will do the final stitch with the machine okay this is how our piece is looking this has been hand basted I've actually hand basted it all the way down there so that this doesn't move anyway so I've gone there and then a little bit down same on the other side so that's fixed in place and we'll have one shoulder seam that is visible to us here and the other one is tucked in under there just leave it like it is here this is my right hand when you're looking down on the right hand side you have that shoulder seam there and it's the same side where you have this side of the scarf that is convex curved out and longer this is what needs to match here so we are going to put our top inside the scarf piece we'll end up having right side of the scarf to wrong side right there we'll match up the small shoulder seam with this curved piece remember this is going to come from your shoulder so this is the seam that's going to match there when you look at this you have both of these pieces wrong sides up right side to wrong side right there so make sure you match those seams really well and then as you go down remember we had interfaced up to that first notch this is the notch that is going to match that notch right there so that one has been matched now i'm going to go ahead to the other seam this is the concave side that curves in that is smaller this is going to match the side seam that we have here and on this side we already have two layers the tiny one the one from the main and now this one will just go on top right there on this side because you have this piece in the middle you're going to end up having right sides together on this side you can see the amount of layers that we have here that's why I thought it would be nicer to just have them all flat and pressed open like this so once you've matched these two you can go ahead and match what's in between on the front here as you go in you'll find a single notch right there it's going to match the one that you can see inside here where these two pieces were joined match that up and then as you go along you'll find this notch up to where it was interfaced that is going to match that one right there and it's the edge of that piece so match them up right there and then you match up the rest so all along this neckline you will have one layer that's interfaced so it'll be a really stable neckline on the back you also have double notches there that are going to match these two match that up keep going and you'll see a single notch that's at the end of this interfaced area that is going to match the edge of this piece there and the notch right there so when we have it all matched it's just one seam on the round catching all the layers 3 8 seam allowance i'm going to use a shallow zigzag to do this seam
Now I'm going to use my blind hem presser foot again because the next step has some understitching and this always helps. Okay, here you can see the seam. It's going to allow some stretch. Turn your top right sides out. You're going to have this side has the little shoulder pieces and the seam is enclosed in there. That's why we finished the neckline previously only on this side. And then on this side, you have this. So it's really important to understitch so that you don't see the wrong side of the fabric from the right side of the garment. So basically we need to understitch from here up to this other side. And you can see where to stop. I'm going to stop a little beyond there where that seam is. To be able to do that, I'm going to open this up like this. I'll have the scarf piece on my right hand and the garment on the left. The seam allowance is going to be underneath this wrong side of the fabric. You look at it like that, it's going to be extended. And that is where we're going to sew on the edge. All the way here up to this other side right there. Okay, after putting the pins there so I know from where to where to sew, I'm going to take this scarf and push it out of the way. All I need to be under stitching is one layer. These main pieces and the seam allowance under there. You can put your hand through this armhole here. You can touch the seam allowance under there and we're sewing on the edge. Here's the shoulder seam, it's going towards the back. You can see that this is covering that interfacing. I could have put white interfacing but I did it black just so you could see where it was. Here we can see where we're going to stop under stitching. It's a small section, it's not a large section. This is how it looks from the wrong side. This is the side we did first with the binding, and this is the side that we've sewn afterwards. The under stitching is going to keep the wrong side of the fabric inside without being seen. And now we have a normal armhole that's been closed already. You can see there's plenty enough seam allowance for you to sew your sleeve with 3 8 and on this side, this is just a normal side seam. The scarf is tucked in there, you just need to just put it away and you can set in your sleeves on the round like normal. That's all that's left and then sew in your hemband. And this is the way that you would put this on. So this area of the shoulder that has the binding is going to be on your left shoulder. On your left shoulder you just have a normal sleeve. This is where you have the scarf piece coming out from there and it will be part of the side seam but in a separate layer. On the right shoulder is where you're going to have the scarf piece covering the shoulder. I'm just going to get some white thread and do a little tacking there that's going to create some uh, texture. So when I'm going to put my top on, I'm going to look for that to know that that's going to be the back. Here is my first version. You can see the purple and the black. I love this tone of purple. It's a really nice soft sweater knit. Look, it does have some drape, but it's not that much. And I thought it was just perfect, has the right amount of stretch. I have no troubles hemming this with a twin needle. And you can see that this overlay goes over one shoulder, sleeve comes from underneath, and then this sleeve is the one that's seen. That's why I only worried about matching this sleeve to the armhole as best as I can. But I knew that the sleeve that was going to be covered, it didn't really matter. I cut all my pieces in a single layer, all of them with the fabric right sides up and the pattern piece right sides up. My front and back are cut diagonally like this. You can see the stripes. Basically cutting it on the bias. I made sure to match the side seams like that on both sides. And I did the same with this piece there. You know, it would really bother me if these stripes didn't match. So this took extra long to do. That's why I decided I didn't want to film this version because I'd had enough already with the time I'd used with the stripe matching. <laughs> and also with this fabric, because it's the same in the right and the wrong side, you weren't really going to be able to see what I was doing clearly, you know, with the neckline and everything. Cuffs, horizontal stripes there. I've left the horizontal stripes on the band. I don't really mind them being down there just in that area. This is the side that has the binding finish and this is the other side where there's under stitching. The whole neckline is stabilized with interfacing so it's not a neckline that stretches. It's not going to go out of shape. It's really, really stable and I just think it's amazing. Let's see this on. This is my first camo top from Itch to Stitch in a size 16. This is made as per the original with a stripy sweater knit fabric that has purple and black. I really enjoyed thinking and cutting up my pieces so that the stripes would go in opposing directions. I have it on with basic basic styling so I can really show off this unique design that has asymmetry as a big feature. There's a long sleeve and a long shaped cuff and the bottom is finished with a hemband. Here you can see the v-neck front and the asymmetric scarf overlay piece that goes over your right shoulder. So pretty it goes across your body diagonally and there is a v-neckline on the back as well. 
These two V necklines are not deep. Here you can see the seam that unites the small shoulder pieces on the left side of your body, front and back. And I did attempt a bit of stripe matching on the sleeve that you can see, the one that's not covered with the overlay. I really, really loved sewing something different and how all the pattern pieces came together with these. I love the result. I just think it's really striking. It's a really original style that I would love to make again for sure. I really enjoyed sewing it. I can't wait to wear it. I can't really describe the feelings I have putting this on, but just sort of fabulous goes in there, just awesome because it's so different. You know, I love sewing something different and I think it's one of a kind. I love the style. Of course, I thought I have to do something different with the second version. I usually do. I usually stray from the original version because my pattern test is done. And I've chosen that athletic knit that is appropriate for hot weather and decided to make this one sleeveless. There is one sleeve that was sewn in normal. I tried this on and just made that a little bit narrow, just calculated what that circumference was going to be and drafted my own band. My band was two inches tall, cut it about 85% or 15% shorter so that it brings this all in. I don't have any gaping and I'm really happy with the coverage there. When you want to add bands to patterns that don't have them, you know, you can. It's really liberating to be able to add your own detail to some patterns. I have a really comprehensive masterclass about that. I'll link it down below. And this is my summer version. Of course, I knew that this armhole was not going to be seen, so I didn't really worry about how this one looked. I just used the original armhole and put a band on there. But the one that was going to be seen, because I just have my arm there, I made it slightly narrower right there. The fabric is amazing, it's so soft, and it was perfect to film because I have a right side and a wrong side that's super different, so you could see what I'm doing. You can see the black binding right there and this other side. And the stitching is done in black, so you could see it but it's done so well that it's not going to be seen. The white fabric is not going to be seen on the outside. And I think it's just fabulous. I can't wait to wear this, it's so nice. I just, you know, I have a little bit of an arm showing on the other side and the whole arm showing on the other. And because with this one, you can really see the seams, I'll just flip it to the other side. Here's the front with my band. I just pressed it, I didn't top stitch that down. The side has the binding. Shoulder seams have been stabilized right there with interfacing. This seam that unites the small shoulder piece to the main and is enclosed in there, super neat. And it goes off to the other side to the back, very nice. I have opted to serge and press these seams separately because it's less bulky. And there we have the hemband at the bottom. Right there, I tacked with a bit of white thread. I can see the texture of it so that when I grab my top and I see that, I know that that is the back and I don't put it on wrong, the wrong side. I mean, it could be easy for you to put it on you know, with the back to the front, but then you'd end up with the overlay on the left shoulder. So if you make a mistake, just, just make sure that your overlay is on your right shoulder because that's what it's supposed to be. Or else it's not gonna fit properly either if you have the back to the front, you know. Have a look at this one on. I really, really love it. This is my second camo top from Itch to Stitch, size 16. This time in a lighter athletic knit that is more suited for warmer weather. I love the black and white as always. And the main pieces are exactly the same as per the original pattern with one exception. It is the same lovely fit, the same asymmetric overlay and hemband that brings the top closer to the body. I love the length here. I think this V neckline is so pretty in the front and the back. And of course, it's very apparent here that there are no sleeves, they are missing, and this was totally intentional. I drafted my own bands to finish these armholes and love the look. I always love a sleeveless top. I really can't help myself making things sleeveless. Even though the wrong side of my fabric is white, this area is all hidden away with a neat understitching. The sewing techniques in this pattern are really, really great. And I'm really glad I made this work for hot weather too. It adds another unofficial option and I absolutely love it.
when you sew garments that have asymmetric pieces, it's just really important to cut them in a single layer. You will usually have special instructions about that in your pattern. And in this pattern instruction, it was really clear that you had to cut a lot of the pieces with the fabric right sides up and the pattern piece right sides up in a single layer. If you follow that, you won't end up with the things on the wrong side, you know? So I think just following everything is gonna get you there. The notches are very well put there, so you can put everything together like a puzzle. Always remember single notches are for the front, double notches are for the back. Let me know what you think about asymmetry. I know a lot of people like it and other people don't like it. I absolutely love it. I love anything that's asymmetric. It's really eye-catchy, original, unique, fun to sew. What can I say? It is something that you can embrace if you haven't before and I'm sure you're going to enjoy your time. Remember the camo top is 20% off for the first week. Find my affiliate link down below in the description box of this video if you'd like to use it and I will see you again very soon i'll have a lot of videos coming for you this week and i will see you back very very soon bye happy sewing